Hey guys, so I'm going to introduce you to a rhetoric question that basically only shows up on the SAT, not the ACT. Um, and it'll look like number four here. It's going to say, which choice most effectively combines the two sentences? Basically what it says. Now you'd think this would be like an ICDC question, independent clauses, dependent clauses, like you should be labeling IC and DC to the left and right of the punctuation like you want to do on ICDC questions. Surprisingly, it's not really an ICDC question because you're going to find that the answers all punctuate properly between independent and dependent clauses. On the SAT, when you're combining two sentences, what they're really getting at um, is what is the most succinct way and most logical way that you can link these two sentences together. So with that in mind, let's try question four here. So we think this is probably a grammar-looking question, so we do an ear the grammar prediction on it. In that case, let's cover the answers, which you would do with your hand if you're taking the test. And let's read out this sentence. Spalding agreed that there was a need for appealing books for beginning readers. He thought he knew who, who should write one. All right, all looks perfect, right? Two independent clauses, period in between them, looks good. Looks like an ICDC question. All right, so I did the ear, then grammar question, the grammar on the grammar step of the prediction site, year than grammar prediction, year, see if no change sounds good or not, grammar, ask what rule of testing slash what type of question this might be. So, done our prediction. Sounds pretty good. Looks like an ICDC thing. And, all right, so we see it's which of the most, which of the following most effectively combines the two sentences. Like we said, on these questions, you want to uh, combine them as succinctly as possible while remaining as logical as possible. So let's see these answers. All right, A, combines the sentence, uh, readers and he. So Spalding agreed that there was a need for appealing books for beginning readers, and he thought he knew who should write one. Sounds good. Um, I like A. B, thought he knew about appealing books for beginning readers, namely, he thought, okay, the namely makes no sense there, so I'm crossing out the namely. C, there's a need for appealing books for beginning readers. All right, so the semicolon followed by the and doesn't work. Semicolon separate two independent clauses. So that actually messes up the ICDC situation. D, for beginning readers. And meanwhile, he thought he knew. Uh, meanwhile is redundant. It's just, it's, we know it's meanwhile. There's no need to say that. So we're going to go with A here. We'll find that B and D had redundant words, unnecessary words, namely and meanwhile. And C actually did mess up the ICDC part, so... Um, let's see if we can find another one. There's usually a couple of these on SATs. As you scroll through these SATs and ACTs, you realize they're testing the exact same questions, except this is, this is uh, one of the few question types that are only on the SAT, not the ACT. One more in here. There we go. 38 is another one. So 38 will cover the answers. Which one most effectively combines the two sentences? All right, so let's read it. Paying for tuition also helps businesses retain employees. Retaining employees is important only because blah, blah, blah. So that retaining employees thing, that's totally redundant. I am not liking that. Um, clearly, um, so ear doesn't like it, and it's definitely one of those combined the two sentences questions, ear than grammar. So, let's look at our answers here. A, paying for tuition also helps businesses retain employees, and this retention, this retention, that is redundant, no good. The retaining of whom, sounds terrible, and we already talked about retention, so it's redundant. All right, let's look at C, paying for tuition also helps business is retain employees, which is important. I, don't know. I like it. C is great. Let's try D. Retain employees. That is important. Not only that, it's a little vague what this that is referring to. Um, the which, that, yeah, the which um, is more specific. Um, in terms of what it's referring to right in the previous sentence below. So we go with the which, um, and you just see. So on these questions, 
Um, just know that it's how do we do it as succinctly and logically as possible to combine the two sentences. They usually get IC and DC stuff correct. It looks like it's going to be all about that. It's actually much more about what's the most succinct and logical way that we can combine these two sentences. And these types of questions only exist on the SAT. Everything else in the two sections between SAT and ACT, grammar is basically the same.